All right, we're back to talk about how to overcome some of those challenges uh, we just talked about. And we're gonna dig into some background about project management uh, in general um, and give you some fundamentals here. Uh, so let's start with what is a project? Well, a project is something that you complete uh, ultimately, it is a, the textbook definition is a temporary endeavor undertaken to create a unique product, service, or result. Um, and it, it's not ongoing operational type of work. Um, so, <clears throat> so that's what differentiates it. Um, and, you know, it's, it's all about delivering uh, something to a customer. Uh, these can be of any kind of size and have many different kinds of projects. What we're sort of generally thinking about here in, in this session uh, is, you know, IT or geospatial or analytical kinds of, of work projects in the context of an emergency management scenario. But uh, it, it could be any kind of project. And I'm showing this, um, this building of the house because that's a good sort of analogy to keep in your mind as you think through what, what is a project. And it's all about building a, a foundation and eventually uh, you build the walls and the roof and you get to a final result and the house is complete. And, <clears throat> and essentially we're gonna apply the same methodology uh, mm -hmm. uh, from that kind of experience to, to our work in, in GIS. So project management is, is the application of you know, knowledge and skills and tools, techniques uh, to, to complete projects. The, the field of study uh, comes out of engineering, uh, basically, throughout history and uh, has evolved over a number of decades. Uh, there are multiple variants of project management sort of practice and, and styles. Um, and professional associations. Uh, one of the most well-known ones is, uh, is sponsored by the Project Management Institute who uh, has uh, put together a body of knowledge uh, and best practices for how to manage projects uh, worldwide that, that uh, are universal. And they also offer certifications and, and other things in this, in this uh, in this specialty, um, but there are other other uh, variants of, of project management as well. So one of the the primary uh, things in project management is uh, this traditional project management uh, framework. We'll call it uh, that the PMI uh, has put together, but basically. It, it covers all these different areas uh, that you see here uh, on the right in, in the colors. So this is managing scope and time and cost and communications and quality and risk and stakeholders and resources and things, uh, procurement. Uh, all of these things are necessary uh, often to, to complete a project successfully. And, and a project manager is responsible for facilitating uh, all this. And it's a very challenging position and it takes a variety of skills to do. Um, and <clears throat> traditional project management provides a framework for doing each of these uh, well. And, um, and it also includes uh, agile project management, which we'll talk about more uh, in a little bit. But, but traditional project management um, is also really concerned with um, producing uh, reports and metrics for management and stakeholders and the team. And uh, so project plans um, and reports and those kinds of things uh, that we're all familiar with in, in the workplace, uh, you know, are, are a great emphasis uh, using uh, traditional project management. Uh, anything else we should mention here, Maddie? Yeah, I would add that, and, and you kind of touched on this, but there's there's so many different approaches to project management and traditional project management. You know, it can be very rigid and structured and there's a lot of sort of technical, um, you know, it covers all these different categories. And um, 
you know, another one is agile, which is a little more flexible and um, kind of dynamic and iterative. And um, what we have found is that, you know, kind of a hybrid approach of incorporating some best practices from a lot of different um, project management styles can really work in this sort of high uh, flexibility and, um, you know, changing priorities type environment that we see a lot in emergency management. Yeah, that's a great point. Exactly. All right, so let's take a look at sort of, you know, the project life cycle here. I think this is helpful just for a visual um, sort of over over time. It's all about getting to complete the work, right? And so um, in the beginning, you're initiating phase or, you know, setting up, uh, planning, uh, those kinds of things. Um, you can see it well yes and then that goes into planning where you're actually building perhaps a project plan uh and and teams and and resources and those kinds of things for for doing the work but uh, you haven't started the work yet um, the executing phase then begins where you're actually you know building the product doing the analysis uh whatever whatever it is um and then at the very end, closing out the project in terms of you know delivering the the, the final uh, product to the customer and any kind of sign off or or le legal contract kinds of uh, sign sign offs that are necessary. So it just kind of helps to see how you know over time um, you're involved in in different activities. Um, generally speaking, sometimes these overlap. Um, there's planning involved throughout a a uh, a project. And then there's also uh, what you see here called monitoring and controlling. So this is all about, you know, how are we doing throughout the project, monitoring performance, monitoring budget, monitoring schedule. So this is something, of course, you wouldn't want to only do at the beginning or the end or in the middle, but but something that you're continuously doing. So, um, so this gives you a feel for kind of the, the life cycle of a, a typical project. Okay, so yeah, <clears throat> taking a look at sort of some classic. Okay, so now let's take a look at uh, two of the classic kinds of uh, project management approaches, which you'll hear a lot about. Uh, on the left here, we have the waterfall method and on the right, uh, the agile uh, method. So with, with waterfall, uh, like the name implies, uh, you're working through a project in a, in a sequential fashion and not moving on to the next phase of a project until the, the current phase you're working on is complete. And this approach, uh, came out of you know engineering uh, field and works uh, quite well for large engineering projects where the requirements are are very much established um, like let's say building an airplane or something uh, also a good approach when the customer uh, uh, ha wants to set all the requirements in the beginning you know and 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 just wait to get the results uh, afterwards. Doesn't need to be sort of part of the process, if you will. Um, it's also a good uh, method when sort of the quality of something is the most important, speed uh, is not so important. So they're willing to take as long as necessary in order to get the exact product. And it's also good for projects where there's lots of uh, dependencies. On the other hand, there's the agile approach which is designed, and we'll go into this in more detail, but just for an for a introduction, it is built for projects where the requirements are uncertain. So just the opposite of that, and where customers like to be very involved in um, each step of the of project, um, where you have a rapidly changing kind of environment with different kinds of uncertainties that could change. Uh, the direction uh, of a of a course of work, uh, where speed is really necessary over uh, some other factors, um, and where you know management is not uh, uh, so worried about reporting and and metrics and those kinds of things, but is really focused on on the product itself. Just wants to see 
see something working. Uh, and, and again, where there are per, perhaps fewer dependencies, uh, Agile is a great approach. So you can, you can imagine that in a disaster or, or public safety kind of uh, scenario, um, which one of these is more likely to be uh, a good approach. But uh, again, like Maddie said, it, there, are, there are characteristics of both of these methods which are, are helpful in, in all projects, we think. Um, one of the, the basic uh, concepts in, in project management uh, that's very helpful to understand is what's known as the triple constraint. Uh, th these are competing factors, essentially, uh, but are all very important. Um, the scope of a project, that is, you know, what, what work needs to be done, uh, the cost, you know, how much money do you have to do it, and the time, uh, when does it need to be delivered? So changes to one of these and typically, you know, change uh, uh, on, so if you increase cost uh, or increase scope rather, <laughs> um, <clears throat> it would mean <clears throat> you would need to increase your budget if you were to keep uh, time uh, the same or you could increase uh, the time perhaps and do it for the same amount of cost. So these are the kinds of, uh, of things project managers have to deal with. Um, and, and quality you know, we put in there because you know that's <laughs> important sort of all the time. And, and I think uh, as you're balancing these, you know, you could balance any number of, of project characteristics, but, but these are, are the ones that are, are sort of um, uh, top of mind. Uh, any other thoughts here, uh, Maddie? Um, yeah, I mean, just thoughts on, you know, changing scope of a project. You can't do that without, you know, invariably changing, you know, increasing costs and increasing time. So um, you're definitely not going to add more on to the project requirements and then somehow do it for, for cheaper and faster. So um, it's just a, a, you know, a good representation of, of that consideration. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so looking at scope itself, I mean, you know, I think one of the one of the, the key, you know, techniques uh, that comes from traditional project management is, with how to define scope is what's known as the work breakdown structure. And this is all about, you know, breaking down a project into uh, its constituent parts, um, you know, mini projects, mini components, and then you know, further subdividing that all the way down to uh, uh, actions or activities or deliverables that uh, you can figure out uh, how long it would take to build and how much it would, it would cost um, to, to build it. So, so this process is what's known as, you know, breaking down your work. It's used in <clears throat> all kinds of, of different fields and I think is, is one of the uh, really useful tools uh, that comes from uh, traditional project management. Yeah, and one thing we talk about, and we'll get into this later when we talk more about agile, but when you're you know, planning for a set number of tasks to take on for your sprint cycle, you really have to have your larger project scope broken down into such small doable tasks in that sprint cycle that it really helps to have um, something like this done beforehand because you don't want to take on a task that's um, you know five weeks long to complete if you have to show progress in your sprint cycle which is maybe two weeks or three weeks long so yeah breaking down tasks is really critical yeah yeah that's right and then as we'll learn <clears throat> later um, defining work for uh, the agile approach is is really the key thing in the, in the whole uh, uh, methodology. And so um, this technique here is, is really helpful in doing that. So here's an example of where knowing things about traditional project management will really help you in, in Agile. Mm -hmm. um, looking at time, uh, here's another really key uh, methodology from uh, traditional project management that I think is useful. This is what's known as the critical path. It's a method to identify the sequence of project tasks uh, that are the, the most important on a schedule and, and 
basically this is measured by um, <clears throat> it's the it's the tasks if there are multiple tasks that are concurrent in a project it's the the longest of, of any one of those so that means it's that sequence must be completed bef before a project could be delivered at its earliest date and so so therefore any delay to to task uh, that are going on there or any activities on, on that line um, would end up delaying the project in its entirety, no matter how well you did on, on other tasks that aren't on that critical path. So it's just one of these um, visualization kind of methods that I think is very helpful as you're thinking through um, how to sequence tasks and um, think about when you might be able to deliver your, your final product. Any other thoughts here? Um, no, I mean, I just, I definitely go back to the chart you showed a couple slides ago where your monitoring and controlling aspect kind of happens throughout the project. And so your critical path is sort of that, um, that track that you want to be keeping tabs on, you know, probably the most, because if it goes over, then your entire project is going to go over. So that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now looking at uh, time uh, further. Of course, there's managing a project schedule, and you know the traditional way to do this is using uh, Gantt charts, which is uh, what you're seeing here. Uh, these are super helpful for visualizing uh, how uh, project activities relate to one another and which ones are are needed to be completed before another one can start. Um, using uh, modern day tools. Uh, you can put in, you know, assign resources to tasks and uh, have uh, these uh, automated in terms of their relationships so that any change to one will change the others as well. So using a tool like Microsoft Project and, and, and others will, will do that automatically for you. So again, uh, super helpful for um, visualizing uh, and staying on, on track with your project, which is what it's all about. Um, yeah, and a lot of the tools that we'll talk about later have really quick and easy ways to convert between a Gantt chart like this and a Kanban style board with all your tasks with their deadlines on them. So there's a lot of really efficient ways to create this type of planning document. Yeah, and, and so you can see here, um, you know, milestones and, and you know, super tasks and subtasks and all that. It's it's a very efficient way to put all that into a single view. And then that helps your team and your stakeholders and everybody know what's going on. Okay, so looking at uh, cost management, of course, one of the, the most important ones on our triple constraint. Um, I selected this picture here, which is uh, what's known as earned value management, which is one of the sort of novel techniques that comes out of uh, traditional project management for monitoring uh, cost and performance uh, and value over the course of a, of a project's uh, life cycle. Um, but cost management in general is just managing the budget. Uh, and so it's whatever you need to do as a project manager to make sure you're not going over budget uh, on your project. And so there's lots of tools available, um, spreadsheets and, you know, costing software and, and so forth. Um, but uh, I think, you know, when you're thinking about costs in an emergency management kind of project, um, there's a need for using uh, budget reserves and, and kind of contingencies uh, when you're when you're when you're budgeting uh, because of the the uncertainty that exists in a, in a project. So so these are kind of common things to to do. All right. So human resources and stakeholder management. These are in traditional project management separate uh, knowledge areas, but because they they're all about people, um, we're talking about them together here, and. and it, you know, th this is putting together a team, um, training your team, um, you know, recruiting uh, uh, people uh, for the project, um, all that kind of stuff. And then 
and then managing your team. So, um, you know, how, how, are, how are the team members doing? Are they meeting their goals? Are they happy? Are they communicating well? All that kind of stuff. And then there's stakeholder management, which is really, you know, you know typically it's, it's your customer and their customers and, you know, the, the key members of the organization that you're working for. Um, but in, in reality, stakeholders are, are everybody involved in the project, um, that, including the team. So all, all these players together matter a lot. And I think one of the, the, the key, you know, responsibilities maybe above all else for a project manager is to be paying attention to uh, the team members and, and the stakeholders at all times. And, and that's a really hard thing to do. It takes a lot of people skills. Um, and so it's, it's a lot of communication. And, um, you know, we wanted to mention it here. I think, you know, given all the challenges of an emergency scenario, it makes doing this kind of stuff even, even harder given the short durations, the communication challenges, the short uh, you know, kinds of project time frames we're on and, and all that stuff. Yeah, what, what are your thoughts, Maddie? Um, I mean, one thing that's really nice about the Agile approach is, um, and, and this could work with traditional project management, I'm sure as well, but like the, what we've incorporated at FEMA is having sprint demos, where at the end of each sprint, we'll uh, directly show our stakeholders or our customer a project, you know, progress on a project that we've been working on. And so it really incorporates that feedback mechanism, like directly into your process of managing your projects. Um, so there's definitely a, um, a huge emphasis on um, involvement of your client and your stakeholders and in emergency management, that can be a lot of different people. But I think with, um, the agile process, it's sort of inherent in how you do a little bit of work and then show it to your, your customer and then get feedback. And then you do a little bit more work and it's sort of very iterative in that way. So involving stakeholders is, is very important there. Yeah, yeah. All right, so managing risk. This is something that emergency managers are, are good at by nature. Uh, for their work, I think, but uh, we should mention it here. Um, there's a lot of risk on projects. Um, so this, you know, a risk is any uncertainty that could have a negative impact on, on meeting the project objectives, finishing on time, on budget, meeting the quality requirements and so forth. So this could be caused by, by any number of things, new conditions, uh, a, a law, a changing environmental constraint, new requirements, these all could present risks to a project, losing a staff, um, you know, costs going up uh, in the middle of the project, um, new deliverables being added uh, that hadn't been planned, uh, anything like that, right? Um, or, or simultaneous uh, incidents going on at the same time. That's something that um, still challenges the emergency management community is how to plan for that kind of eventuality. And so this is something that has to be done continuously throughout a project is um, thinking about our, what could happen that would mess up our project and cause us to, to not complete our work uh, as expected. And um, there's a number of tools out there for helping with risk management, um, the risk register and risk meetings and um, you know, doing SWOT analyses and, and all of these kinds of things. But uh, just wanted to, to mention that. I think it's a, a key part of uh, project management uh, and certainly in an emergency uh, situation too. Yeah, and especially in emergency management, one common risk is while you're working on a project is receiving a new requirement or a new project <laughs> that's higher priority than the project you're already working on. And that, that risk is sort of inherently there with um, everything that's going on in emergency management. And so that can be something that you build into your process. So for you know, agile, taking on ad hoc requests can be part of something that you account for in your task process. Um, but yeah, that's always there for sure with, with emergency management is new, new tasks coming in before you can complete the last one. You know, one of the ones we've, we've had a lot of is staff 
you know, who, who have to be assigned to, to mm -hmm. other projects in the, in, and that presents a major risk to being able to, to complete work. So, you know, there, they, these can come from any number of areas and uh, something a project manager has to keep their eye on all the time.